In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a power cord adapter to run your Anvil Foundry all grain brewing system on 240 volts without cutting the cord. And that's coming up next. How's it going? My name is Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see how to videos just like this one and all sorts of other brewing related stuff, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. A uh, quick disclaimer before we get started and I show you how to make this adapter. Uh, you know, these opinions and this tutorial is all my own. Um, it, you know, it, if you don't know anything about electrical and you don't understand it, obviously don't try it. It's probably not even recommended that you even try to do it. One other thing I wanted to say is that no matter if you use the Anvil on a 120 volt system or a 240 volt system, you got to make sure that it's on a GFCI circuit, whether that's a GFCI plug on the 120 volt or it is a 240 volt GFCI breaker in the box. So you gotta make sure you're safe. Beer is not worth dying for. Don't get electrocuted. This video is produced by me. It has nothing to do with Anvil, the company. Um, they're not endorsing it, they're not promoting it. It's in no way affiliated with them. I just wanted to make that very clear. This is not something that they are promoting to be done. They actually promote cutting the cord off and putting another adapter or another plug on that cord. So. That is what their recommendation is. I didn't want to do that, and that's why I'm making this video. Some quick electrical math before we look at doing the adapter. Uh, at 120 volts, it's rated at 1600 watts, and then if you want to figure out amperage on wattage, you need to divide the wattage by voltage. And at 120 volts, this unit draws 13.3 amps, and at 240 volts, you would divide the wattage by the voltage again, and when you do that, you come up with 11.7 amps on the 240 volt system. So in my opinion, with the 240 volts, you're actually drawing less power than you are on the 120 volt circuit when you do it that way. So, you know, that's one of the reasons that, I, that led me to do this adapter and use the lower uh, voltage components that I did in the system because the amperage is certainly not exceeding what those actually handle. And so because of that, I really don't see an issue. I know the voltage is increased and you know, these, the, some of the plugs are only rated for 120 volts, but when you look at the difference between a lower amperage 120 volt plug and a lower amperage 240 volt plug, everything is pretty much the same. I mean, there's not a lot of difference between those two and I really don't see an issue with using it that way. That is a 240 volt 20 amp plug and as you can see none of the blades or anything like that are any larger than what comes on a normal 120 volt plug. They're just oriented in a different way so you don't plug one into the other which kind of you know that, that reinforces what I'm saying about using the same components. So with all that out of the way let's jump into the tutorial. Before you use the adapter you need to switch the anvil foundry to 240 volts and you can do that by simply unscrewing the cover on the switch in the rear and switching it to the down position which is 240 volts. All right so here's what you're going to need. You're going to need some wire and for my option I opted for 12-2 with a ground in a SJ00W which is kind of like a power cord for power tools and stuff like that. It has a really good flexible jacket on it. Um, pretty easy to work with. So that's what I used for the wire on there. I got about three feet of it. I didn't want to go much longer than that just because I didn't need to. Got a standard 120 volt plug end, which is something like what you would use to repair an extension cord with. Uh, got that. Then I also got a 30, 30 or 50 amp plug. This is one that will fit into the same type of socket as what I've used in some of the other brewing systems that I have. Screwdriver, wire strippers, and I have a razor blade for cutting the jacket on the outside. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we'll take a look at this adapter and it actually shows us a stripping length on here. So according to what it shows there, we need to strip off about this much here and we'll wind up having to cut some of the other wires in there because of the fact that uh, we won't need them as long. So what I recommend doing on this is using your razor blade and you're gonna roll very gently and you don't want to put much pressure at all you just want to do enough to score the wire so that you can get this jacket to come off of there and it usually it'll take a little bit of pulling on it but it'll come off once you score it and if for some reason you don't get it scored all the way just do just a little tiny bit of a score on there and it doesn't need much because you don't want to cut the wires inside so pull that off and there we go okay now you'll want to also cut off some of this insulation here. Um, you can just cut it off 
with your razor blade. Be careful not to cut any wires with it. All right, then the other end for this plug here, the contacts are gonna be about right here and we're gonna want this to clamp on for strain relief. So we'll cut it probably about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, something like that on there. So we'll do our same scoring on the jacket. All right, so we got our wire stripped. Now we'll take this apart. Pretty simple, all you have to do is take the screws out and the nuts will actually fall off, which is not a problem. Open it up inside. You're gonna see a couple different colors here. You got two gold terminals and then a green terminal. The green terminal for this is the ground and then it does not matter. It's what I was gonna say, you, you don't, there's nothing really you can mess up with this. As long as you have the green wire here and both your hot wires here, your, your white and your black here, you're gonna be absolutely fine. So we'll go ahead and uh, pull this one out. Actually, we'll just pull them all out. All right, so we'll flip the back over and we've got our uh, cut gauges here. The green wire, we've got that there. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and cut the white and the black wire to match the corresponding lengths, which we're cutting probably a half an inch off or so of those. So we'll go ahead and cut those off, get them down to the length that they're supposed to be. Then we'll go ahead and strip the wire off, sticking it in the 12 gauge hole there, strip the wire. Same with the black and the white those wires stripped off. You don't need to strip a whole bunch off because we don't want them sticking out of the terminals, but just enough so that they'll fit in there. So there's that. Twist these all together. Then before you do anything else, make sure that you run it through the strain relief here because you don't want to have, I've done that before, get the strain relief, forget to put it through there, and then you're unwiring everything and wiring it back up again. So all right, we got all our wires through there. I'm gonna hook up the, we'll hook up the ground terminal and slide the wire right into the terminal there. Loosen that up a little bit. And what I find with these that works really well is just put it down on the bench and uh, tighten them down. And then you can put a lot of force down on the screw just to make sure you get it nice and tight in there so it doesn't slip out. All right, then we'll go ahead and put the other two in. And then these actually go in, one goes in one way and the other one goes in the other way because you've got some like little knurls here. And so what we'll do is we'll wire the black one first. Put it down on the table, tighten it down really well. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put these both in, actually all three of them in. Put the ground one, start the ground one first. Then we'll go ahead and do the white wire. I'll leave it out a little bit and we'll do the black wire. All right, then it's just a matter of getting the blades installed back into the corresponding holes, uh, ground in the center there, the black wire on the one side, the white wire on the other side. All right, then it's a matter of putting the back on and you gotta kind of line up everything in order to get it in there. They're kind of a pain to get lined up in there sometimes. There it went. Put your screws back in. Put your nut on from the bottom side and then run your screw down. All right, and then last but not least is tightening up your strain relief. Go ahead and tighten those down. You don't have to tighten them too tight. Just make sure they're nice and snug. And that this is nice and tight in there. All right, so now what we need to do is we just need to strip these wires just like we did the other ones. They don't need to be really any longer than what the other ones were. As a matter of fact, they could probably be a little bit shorter, but we'll go ahead and strip off eh, a little bit more than that. Okay, so now before we go to hook everything up, we gotta put it in the strain relief just like we did the other one. Don't forget to do that, otherwise you'll be hooking everything back up again. So we'll take the wire, pull it through here. All right. Make sure our wires are all nice and twisted up. Kind of frayed a little bit coming through there. We'll hook up to ground, to the ground terminal. Check. 
check it, it's good. Now, like I said, it does not matter which side you put the white or the black wire. It does not matter at all. Let's go ahead and get this tightened down. This black one, put it in there, tighten it down nice and tight. And then we'll check it and make sure it's good. Now these are a little bit tricky sometimes because of the fact you need to look for, there's like a little tab there and then that corresponds with some grooves in here. Also, you can line up your screws. So we've got the tab there. All right, and then last but not least, we tighten up our strain relief. And this doesn't have to be super tight, just enough to hold the cord to keep from pulling on the contacts inside. You don't want to really crimp it too much. Uh, let's see. So that looks about right. Just make sure we're not, it's not sliding in there. And now you have just created a adapter to plug the anvil foundry, the cord, the standard cord that plugs into a normal 120 volt outlet into a 240 volt 30 amp outlet. So that is how you do it. It's pretty simple, not really that hard. As long as you put your ground wires on the ground terminals and your black and white wires on either one of the corresponding terminals, you are good to go. And you really, it's just hard to mess it up with this. So there it is. If you have any questions about anything that I showed or you have any comments, obviously I know there's going to be some comments <laughs> from all of the electrical types out there and, and I get it, but I, you know, I don't feel like that I'm putting out anything that's unsafe personally. If I did, if I thought it was unsafe, I wouldn't do it first of all myself and I wouldn't make a video on it. So if you found the video helpful, give us a thumbs up. We certainly appreciate that. All the support we've received, greatly appreciate everyone's comments on videos, thumbs up, sharing it. You know, the discussion that we have in the comments is always great. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.